Hey guys, it's Erica here from Big Cat Creative and today I'm going to show you how to create a scrolling computer mock-up like this in Photoshop. There are actually a number of ways you can create these, but in this tutorial we're going to walk you through how to create this specifically in Photoshop. If you don't have Photoshop and prefer using Canva, we actually created a tutorial on how to create something very similar in Canva. So I will link that down below for you to check out. Okay, so open up Photoshop and let's get started. Okay, so you're going to need Photoshop for a start, obviously. Uh, we're running Adobe Creative Cloud, but this might work in earlier versions. I did used to have an earlier version of Photoshop where you had to do everything frame by frame and it really wasn't as simple as this. So try to follow along, but if you are running an older version, just be aware that this might not work exactly as intended, and that might be because you're running an older version. So I can't tell you exactly which versions work with this, but I know if you're on Creative Cloud, you're good to go. You're also gonna need an image or a graphic to put your scrolling website into. I have a ton of photos set up for this, but you can also use a graphic too, like if you wanted to create something custom in Photoshop before you did this. It doesn't have to be the exact shape, of a computer, it can be longer, so you can really get creative with this. But if you are using an image, I do recommend it has the computer or iPad or laptop or whatever you're looking at straight on. So this is a good example of one that would work quite well because the computer is very straight. As soon as you try and use something that is on an angle, maybe like this, it's sort of not straight onto the camera. This just isn't gonna work because the way that image is sort of not straight on, trust me, it just won't work with this method. So definitely try and find an image where your computer graphic is facing straight on and it's not on any sort of angle or tilt. So if you have those two things, that's a good start. The last thing we're gonna need is a full screenshot of whatever website or whatever you're promoting. In this case, we're gonna do a website because that's probably the most common thing people use these for. So I'm just going to open up a website. In this case, I'm gonna use just one of our demo templates for Squarespace. And the way we take full page screenshots is we use a Chrome extension. Now, you do have to be using Google Chrome to use this specific extension. I'm not sure if they make versions for other browsers but you kind of should be using Google Chrome anyway because it's the best. <laughs> I'm sure you could find something for your browser though, so you could probably Google something like full page screenshot for XYZ browser extension or something like that. I've linked this specific one we use down below. It's fine, it does the job. It's called Go Full Page. So if you wanna download this specific one, you can click the link in the blog post or below the YouTube video. We'll have that down below for you. And essentially you just click it and it will start screenshotting your page. Um, for this one specifically, I do like to go all the way down and make sure everything is loaded up first. And then I click to screenshot because it can be a little bit glitchy. So you'll just wanna check your screenshot after it has taken it and just make sure everything looks good. Sometimes you have to do it a couple times before it gets everything right. Okay, I was gonna say that looks perfect, but as you can see, if I zoom in here, it's doubled up on these buttons. So this is what I mean by the screenshot can be a little glitchy. So I'm just gonna do it again. Usually it's fine the second time or third time around. Okay, so that's much better now. We've just got three buttons, everything else looks good. And I'm going to download this as an image, so the PNG option. Cool, so now we have Photoshop, we have the image we want to use, and we also have our full page screenshot ready to go. Okay, first up, let's open our background image in Photoshop. You can do that by just dragging it into your Photoshop icon, or you can also right click and open with Photoshop. So here's our image, and we could get started on the animation straight away, but potentially your background image is quite big depending on where you got it from. So we might wanna size it down a little bit just to speed things up and get it optimized to the right size we want it before we start. So if you're doing this for Instagram, you'll probably wanna make it like 1080 by 1080 because that is the Instagram standard size. Or if you're making this for your website, you'll probably want it to be between about 1500 or maximum 2500 pixels wide. You also might want to crop it down to a different ratio. So if you did want to update the size, just go to image, image size, and we can update the size here. So mine's actually already 1080 by 1080. 
so it's perfect I want to use it for Instagram that's the size I want it to be so just have a play around and adjust this to whatever you think you want your image size to be before we start just so we can get it right to start with if you're not sure about which size to make your image depending on where you're putting it we do have a blog post all about how to optimize your images for web it's actually specifically for Squarespace but we talk a lot about how to get the right image sizes around your site in that post and it does apply to pretty much any website platform so I'm going to link that down below it's called how to optimize images for Squarespace and that will give you an idea of roughly what size you should make your image and then also at the end when we are exporting the image if you are planning it to upload it to your website that post is going to be really helpful to show you how to compress it and make it smaller so it doesn't slow down the speed of your website and all of that good stuff. So definitely check that out if you're not sure about how to optimize your images for web, as that'll be really helpful for you. But in this case, I'm just gonna leave this at 1080 by 1080, because I'm gonna use it for Instagram. Okay, so now we're gonna open up our screenshot in Photoshop as well. So I've got mine here in my downloads, and I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna drag it into Photoshop, which is gonna open it up here. Then I'm gonna copy it. So what I'm gonna do is on Mac, I'm gonna go Command A, or on Windows, it's probably Control A, which is gonna select the whole image. You can see the little lines around it. And then I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna do Command C. Again, on Windows, it's probably Control C. If you can't figure out the controls, you can also go to Select, Select All, which is gonna do that same thing as the Control Command A, and Edit, Copy. So we've just got that selected and copied and we're gonna come over to our main graphic here and we're gonna paste it in. So you can do edit, paste or command and control V. Now it's likely that this screenshot is gonna be way too big for your image because it is taken from the full size of the website. So what we're gonna do is just make it a bit smaller. So drag it over to where you can see one of the corners and depending on your settings that you have set up for Photoshop, you'll either want to hold shift or you won't want to hold shift. So in my settings, I have the shift disabled so that the website is gonna hold its shape. If I hold shift, it's actually not gonna hold its shape and I'm gonna stretch it. So just be careful to not stretch your website basically. And you'll notice that if you hold shift or if you don't hold shift, one of those is going to make your website stretch. So this can be a little bit fiddly here because your website is so big. But what we're going to do is we're going to bring it down, make sure we're not stretching it. So you might need to be holding shift the whole time you're doing this. Because we don't want it to look like this or this is basically what we're trying to avoid. And we're going to bring it down to the rough size of what we want it to be. So we're going to try and fit it into this computer. So it's going to be about this size. So I'm just going to zoom in and have a look probably going to be about here let's say and we can always adjust it afterwards too so I'm going to use the arrow keys to just sort of position it roughly where I want it and then I'm either going to hit the enter return key or I'm going to click this tick up here in the top and that's just going to place that image exactly where we left it so the image is there we actually want to hide it now because we're going to create a little frame to put it in so what we'll do is come over to our layers panel and if you can't see your layers panel you'll want to go up to window and select layers and make sure you can see your layers and we're going to click on the little eyeball next to this layer that we just added in our website screenshot and that's just going to hide it for now because we don't need to deal with that just yet and then basically now we just need to create the little frame that we're going to put the website in which is going to scroll inside of so if you're familiar with photoshop you can use whatever selection tool you want i quite like using the polygonal lasso tool i literally don't know how to pronounce that but it's the second one here if you do have like a perfectly square image you might just be able to use the rectangular and we're going to essentially select that frame so the, re the rectangular in this case might be a little bit off because the computer is not perfectly straight. So I'm actually going to go back and I'm going to use that whatever it's called tool. <laughs> and I'm going to zoom in a little and I'm just going to select exactly where I want my frame to be. Now this might take a few goes to get this perfectly right. But that's probably okay. 
If you want to move it around a little bit, you can use the arrow keys to adjust where it is. But once it's connected, you can't really adjust it. So it's not perfect, but it's good enough for this video. We can see we have this selection now, and this is where our website image is going to live. So again, if you're familiar with Photoshop, there's actually so many different ways you can do this. But I think the easiest is we're going to go back into the layer that has our website on it, unhide it. So just click where that eye was, and that's going to turn it on and off. So we'll turn it back on. And now you can see the selection, the website, and the background image all together. And while you still have that selection, click on the layer that has your website screenshot in it, and then click this layer mask tool. And that's actually going to take that layer and put it within the selection you have. So I'm going to click it and you'll see it crops it into the layer. And you can see down here in the layers panel, you have the original screenshots. The whole thing is still there and it's linked with this selection. So essentially this image is inside the selection. Now, if we want to do any final adjustments to the original screenshot within the frame, we can do that now. I can see that mine's like a little cropped off. It doesn't look very good to be honest. So I do need to adjust it a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is in my layers panel, I'm gonna come down to these two and I'm gonna click on this link and this is gonna sort of separate the two so I can edit them individually rather than editing them as one. So when I unlink, I should be able to click on the website and edit it just like I was earlier. So I'm gonna adjust it with the arrow keys and just slightly move it around. And then I'm gonna continue to make it a bit smaller because it doesn't quite fit the way I hoped it would. So I'm just making really final adjustments here. And just make sure that your whole website is outside of the frame. You don't want to have it inside the frame or the frame is sort of pointless. So you wanna make sure it's slightly sitting outside of that frame you created doesn't have to be by much. And that's looking a lot better. So again, I'm either gonna hit the enter key or click on this tick up here to save those transform changes. Okay, so you can actually leave that unlinked and now we're going to create the animation. So you wanna click on window timeline, which is here at the bottom, and that's gonna open this timeline along the bottom of your page. Then we're gonna click where it says create frame animation and you'll see a very small timeline <laughs> show up here. So it's basically just a representation of what's in your document. And essentially what we're trying to do is create the first frame. And the first frame is gonna look just like this. And then the last frame is going to be basically the bottom of our site. And in between, we're gonna create a nice swift scrolling animation. So the first frame is looking good. The only thing you'll wanna change is the time. So right now it's set to zero seconds. We definitely wanna add some time to this. I'm gonna try 0.1 seconds and see how that looks. We can always go back and change it later if we wanna slow everything down a bit, but let's just start with 0.1. Make sure your layers are unlinked. So just remember to unclick that link icon. And then we're going to click the plus button in this timeline section. So now you can see we have two frames, both set to 0.1 seconds. And what we wanna do is make sure the second frame is selected. And we're going to essentially move this website image or whatever image you're using to the final frame we wanna see. So click on that screenshot and we're essentially just going to shift it up now, when you do shift it up, be careful not to move it side to side. And to avoid moving it side to side, we can hold down shift as we bring it up. And this is going to make it so that we can't move it side to side. So you can see I'm scrolling, 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 and we want to get to the very bottom. I'm holding shift the whole time. And that is the bottom of the website. So now that we have those two different frames, we have the first frame and the second frame, we'll want to click on this it's called tween, I don't know what that means, but it's like this little <laughs> moving dot icon. Click on that, and this is gonna essentially populate all the frames in between so we can get a nice smooth motion. So this is where if you are using an older Photoshop, you might notice that you don't have this option and you have to actually manually add all of the different frames, which takes forever. So hopefully you do have this and you can continue on with the tutorial. Okay, so this is when you have to take a bit of an estimate of how many frames you want to complete the animation. So I usually just start with like 20 to see what it's gonna look like, but obviously if you have a longer screenshot or longer image, you'll probably want to add more, otherwise it might be a bit jumpy. 
but we can always just continue to play around with this until it's perfect. Just leave all the other settings as is and click OK. And you'll see on the bottom, it populates with a bunch of different frames. So if we want to preview it, what we need to do is just click the little play button down here at the bottom. And you'll see it's spread our website out over 20 different frames. So for me, this is a bit choppy. So I'd probably go back and add more. So it's a combination of adding more frames and also changing the time between the frames. So I'm just going to control Z and go back to when I only had two frames. Click that tween button again, and I'm just going to double it and try 40 frames and see how that looks. So that's already looking a bit better to me. I could probably add even more frames. So let's do 60 and click play. So just play around until you get your frames looking exactly how you want them. Obviously, the more frames you add, the smoother it's going to be because there's less jumping between. But the amount of frames you use really depends on your image, how you want it to look. And also keep in mind that adding more frames is going to make your animation a bigger file size because you just have more frames, which creates a bigger file. So if you are using it for your website and you want to keep it smaller, maybe you want to use less frames. And if you wanted to change the time as well, you can either go back and change the timing like we originally did. Or you can just go through and select all the frames and change the time for them, which will change them all. So you can play around with the amount of seconds. Sometimes you might want to change that last frame as well to maybe five seconds, just so it sort of stops at the end. Also, if you're noticing that your website is actually going backwards, this can totally happen if things aren't done perfectly in the beginning. You can reverse the frames by clicking this tiny button here and choosing reverse frames. So if yours is going backwards for some reason, you can reverse everything. So now mine's going to actually be going backwards. Um, so yeah, you can flip the frames back and forth depending on how you want it to look. Okay, so let's say we're happy with our computer, whatever, scrolling animation, and now we want to export it. So we can either export it as a GIF, which we can use as an image around our website, or we can export it as a video, which we can use anywhere as a video. So like Instagram, Facebook, or for some reason, if you wanted to upload an actual video to YouTube or anything like that, we can export both of those file types directly from Photoshop, which is great. So if you want to save as a GIF, you want to go file. And if you have save for web in here somewhere, you'll want to click that. Otherwise, it might be underneath export and then export save for web here. So I think this is the easy way to export as a GIF. If you click on the presets at the top here, you'll notice that there's all of these different GIF options. So the higher the quality, the bigger this file size is going to be. So again, reference that blog post about optimizing images for Squarespace because that's going to give you a really good idea of what sizes you should be using on your site. Traditionally, GIFs are a lot bigger than regular images because they're essentially just a combination of a ton of images. So it's like a pile of images instead of just one static image. So of course, it's quite a lot bigger. In this case, because I added so many frames, it's probably going to be really big, probably too big that I wouldn't ever use this on my website. But you can play around with the different presets here and just zoom in and keep an eye on how it's looking because the more compressed you can get it, the smaller the file size is going to be. And that means the faster it's going to load on your website, which is what we want. So it's a really a combination of trying to find the lowest quality possible that still looks good because that's going to be a happy medium between the smallest file size you can manage and still looking good. So once you're happy and played around with all of the settings here under any of the GIF presets, just click save and that's going to save it as GIF and you can upload that to your website or anywhere you'd want to use a GIF. In the case of saving it as a video, it's just as easy. You just want to click file, export, and then render video. So there's a ton of different settings here. You probably can just leave most of them as is and it will export fine. Just make sure you select the folder where you want to save it and you can play around with the different presets if you want to see what the export quality looks like. 
One thing to note is to make sure the document size is right. It should be using exactly as you've set up in your file initially, but you can also change it here as well. So again, mine's going on Instagram, so 1080 by 1080 is perfect. And just click render when you're done, which might take a little while depending on how big your file is. So I'll just open that up and have a look. So I've got a 10 second video and it's all ready to be uploaded to Instagram. Cool, I hope that video was helpful for you. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye.